Today we're going to look at a pretty nice integral that we'll evaluate using some of my favorite tricks. So we're going to evaluate the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the arctan evaluated at sine x over sine x. So let's jump right into it. The first thing that I'd like to observe is I can write this as the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the arctan of y times sine x over sine x, where I've evaluated y from 0 up to 1. And that's because arctangent of 0 is 0, and then, well, arctan of 1 clearly gives us 1 times sine x there. And now I'd like to view this evaluation as what I like to call a zeroth integral and then apply the fundamental theorem of calculus to take the derivative and turn this into a first integral. So let's go ahead and do that. That's going to give us the integral from 0 to pi over 2 and then the integral from 0 to 1 of... So let's recall that the derivative of the inverse tangent is 1 over 1 plus the argument, but then you need to take the derivative of the argument as well. So let's see, we're going to have 1 over 1 plus the argument, so that's y squared times sine squared of x, and then we've got to take the derivative of the argument, which is y times sine x, with respect to y, because this is a y integral, but that's simply going to give us a sine x in the numerator, canceling the sine x in the denominator. So here we've got just a 1 here, and then dy by dx. Okay, good. Now, next up, what I'd like to do is change the order of integration. So that's going to leave me with the integral from 0 to 1 of the integral from 0 to pi over 2. And then, well, I'm not changing the function here. So we have 1 plus y squared sine squared x, but just now dx dy. Now, next up, what I'll do is I'll multiply the numerator as well as the denominator by secant squared. In other words, 1 over cosine squared. And we'll see why this is helpful after we get it written down. So let's maybe write those integrals down. And then if I'm multiplying by secant squared over secant squared, I get a secant squared in the numerator. Now in the denominator, I get a secant squared x plus a y squared times a tangent squared x. And that's because, well, secant is 1 over cosine, so what I really have there is sine squared over cosine squared. Now I have dx by dy right there. And now what I'd like to do is recall, you know, something which I'd say is pretty obvious, and that is that we know that secant squared x is equal to the tangent squared of x plus 1. So let's go ahead and insert that into our integral and see what it looks like. So I've still got everything else the same. So those integrals and bounds of integration are the same. But now I'm going to have a secant squared x in the numerator. And then I'll have a tangent squared x plus 1 plus y squared times tangent squared x dx. So something like that. But next up, what I'd like to do is observe that I've got a tangent squared and then I have a y squared tangent squared. I can go ahead and just put those two terms together um, by writing it as 1 plus y squared times tangent squared. So let's do that. Integral from 0 to 1, integral from 0 to pi halves, secant squared in the numerator, and then we'll have 1 plus 1 plus y squared tangent squared, and then dx dy. Forgot our dy there. Now, let's recall that the derivative of the tangent is secant squared. So that motivates us to make a nice substitution right here. And so the substitution I'll make is t equals tangent squared x, sorry, just tangent of x. That makes dt equal to secant squared of x dx, gobbling up that numerator. And then, well, let's see. When x is equal to 0, that means that t is equal to 0 because tangent of 0 is 0. And then as x approaches pi over 2 from below, we have t approaching positive infinity. 
I think that's a kind of a well-known asymptotic behavior of the tangent function. Okay, so now this is gonna look like the integral from zero to one, and then the integral from zero to infinity of one over one plus one plus y squared times t squared dt dy. So we're left with something like that. But in fact, this is a well-known antiderivative form. Maybe let's recall that over here in a green box, that the antiderivative of one over one plus a squared t squared dt is in fact one over a, and then the arctan of a times t. Well, plus a constant, but we won't put that in there. So that's what we're gonna apply now. So this is gonna give us zero to one, that outer integral, and then we'll have, well, what is it? It's gonna be one over one plus y squared. That's under a radical because of how the a squared and a are built in there. And then we're gonna have the arctan of, it's gonna be t times the square root of one plus y squared. And then we're evaluating that from zero up to infinity, dy in the end. So we're left with something like that. Okay, so now if we plug in t equals zero, we get zero. So that lower bound is not contributing to the value. If we let t approach infinity, let's observe that this square root of one plus y squared is always positive. So it's gonna to go to positive infinity. But that gives us the same sort of asymptote that we saw up here with tangent, just the dual version of it. That'll give us a pi over two. So that pi over two is a constant we can factor out. So that gives us pi halves. And then we have the integral from zero to one of, let's see what's left over, dy over the square root of one plus y squared. Okay, great. Now we're almost done. We're gonna make one more type of substitution. It's gonna be a trigonometric substitution. Let's set y equal to the tangent of theta. That means that uh, dy is equal to secant squared of theta d theta. This is a standard maybe setup for a trigonometric substitution. Then furthermore, it makes the square root of one plus y squared equal to just plain old secant theta. It's really the square root of secant squared. Then what about the bounds of integration? Well, let's observe that the bounds of integration are now zero and pi over four. So I didn't write the y values because I kind of ran out of room, but when y is equal to zero, we have tangent equal to zero, that gives us zero. And then when y is one, well, tangent, of, tangent is equal to one, at pi over four, that's kind of well known. Okay, so in the end, that's gonna give us pi halves and then the integral from zero to pi over four of a secant theta d theta. So we're left with something like that. But now secant theta has a well-known antiderivative, we can apply that. So we have pi halves and then the natural log of secant theta plus tangent theta. Technically, there should be an absolute value there, but that being said, it's not required here because in the region that we're working in, it's positive. Now, if we evaluate that at theta equals zero, we get the natural log of one because secant of zero is one, tangent of zero is zero. Then if we evaluate that at pi over four, we'll get the square root of two plus one. Secant is one over cosine, Cosine of pi over four is one over root two, so that gives us root two. So in the end, we have our final answer, pi over two, natural log of one plus root two. And there you have it.